Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through an energy unit in a physics course, and we're getting towards the tail end of that unit, and we're going to be talking about power today. And the term power means something different in terms of physics than it means in everyday life. So my first question is, what does power mean to you in your everyday life? All right, well, that's going to be pretty individualized as a question. Let me talk to you about what the physics version, so the physics version of power is the rate at which work is done and generally you could say it's the rate at which energy is transferred from one thing to another. And we'll look at the equation for power in just a moment, but there are just some images here of examples of power. You can think about work being done, so force applied over a displacement per unit time. That would be one version of power. And then there are applications of power later on that we'll talk about that deal specifically with electricity and electrical power. But let's just start with this equation here. So we're going to say power is work divided by time. Or you could say the rate at which work is being done. That's the most basic definition of power. And so at first glance, it's actually a pretty easy topic to deal with but there's a little more detail to it than there first appears. So let's talk about some of the basics in terms of what power is measured in. Power is measured in joules per second, and we give that a name. So up here we have joules, down here we have seconds, and we give that unit a new name. So that's gonna be called a watt, so therefore you could say one watt is equal to one joule per second. You're probably familiar with watts through light bulbs, maybe computer parts, that kind of thing. And typically what we're gonna do with this equation is we're gonna break down the work equations, so our force parallel to the displacement times the displacement over here. So here it's written as a D. In our kinematics unit, we talked about this as a delta X. Remember, it's been a long time, but that occasionally happens. And that concept is important for later, that sometimes you can have different letters representing more or less the same idea in physics, displacement being a big one. And one other thing I wanna show you real fast is an alternative version of power. If we were to put the D over T, kind of like a delta X over a delta T, then you could simplify that to speed. And so this is an alternative version of power. We're not gonna use this version of power today because it's actually really easy. If you have something with a constant speed and you need to solve for the power and you can figure out the force involved, then you can solve for the power, right? So that's pretty straightforward. What we're gonna do instead is more of a traditional power problem that does involve using the work and even kinematics equations. So let's make a biological connection here. So it's says a male giraffe can have up to 1360 kilograms. That's huge. Let's say a male giraffe starts from rest and accelerates to his top speed of 16.7 meters per second in 12.3 seconds. What is the power done by the giraffe's muscles during this time period? All right, so just like any other physics problem, we're going to start by writing down what this word problem means in terms of physics variables. So I've gone ahead and listed out what we know. We know the mass. We know our initial velocity is zero. Our final velocity is given. We know the time, and we're looking for power. So this is just a quick and easy way of keeping track of what's going on. In this problem, I will say it's not really necessary to draw a diagram, although many problems, if not most problems in physics, you should be drawing a diagram for. All right, so let's start with our equation. So power is work divided by time, and let's sub in our definition of work. So that's gonna be the force parallel times the displacement through which that force is applied. And let's think about what we know and what we don't know here. So we don't know what this force is, but we do know a mass, and we might even be able to do something with this using kinematics. So the question I have is, do you remember what is the connection between force and kinematics over here? And so hopefully you remember that you have Newton's second law and this acceleration is in our basic force equation and it's also a variable in kinematics. So maybe we can do something with our V initial V final time, get our acceleration, and that can help us to eliminate one more variable over here. So that's what we're gonna start to do. So what I've done is just subbed in what that net force equation is. I'm gonna label this as equation one because we're gonna come back to this. And let's think about what we don't know. So we don't know what the power is. We don't know what our acceleration is. We don't know the distance through which that force is applied is or our displacement. So there's actually quite a bit we don't know, but we can start to solve for some of them. Remember, we've got extra information over here. Let's think about how to use this and we've already introduced that topic. We've said, well, if we could do something with acceleration, well, what is our equation for acceleration? It's right here. It's been a long time since we've dealt with kinematics, 
Typically this is done in like September. We're probably much later in the year right now, but that's our basic definition for average acceleration. So we can go ahead and plug in our numbers and get our acceleration, 1.36 meters per second squared. And then what we need to do is update our known information. And so I've gone ahead and done that over here. All right, so if we go back to this equation, we now took care of the A value, but we don't know this delta X. However, we do know quite a bit in terms of kinematics. And again, it's been a long time since we've looked at these four kinematic equations right here. Typically, the strategy is going to be to look for the variable that you just are ignoring because one variable is being ignored with each of these equations up here. So for instance, up here, the variable that's being ignored is delta x, and so on. But in this case, we actually have quite a bit of information. We have enough to be able to solve. We're looking for our delta x, right? This d is going to translate into a delta x. So we could actually use the second, third, or fourth equation to be able to solve for delta x. I happen to pick the third, so I'm going to go ahead and work with that. But at this point, there are multiple ways to solve this kinematics problem. So I picked the third equation. I started by writing it out. And now I think, is anything zero here? Anything zero that I can cancel out? And the answer is yeah, that V initial is zero. And that means we can simplify the equation. We isolate for our unknown. We plug in our numbers at the end and we come up with a delta X or a D value. It's called D in the work equation that's embedded in our power equation. So now we know our D or our delta X value. I'm gonna update my known values over here. So now I can keep track of what we know and go back to the main equation that we were working with. At this point, we do know enough to be able to plug in values. And so we plug in our values and we solve for the power that the muscles of a giraffe put out while it accelerates from rest up to its top speed over 12.3 seconds. So that's how you go about doing a typical power problem that involves work. I do want to summarize the strategy up here and get you thinking about this. For these standard power problems, you're probably going to have to embed the work equation into the power equation, and you may even have to use kinematics equations as well. And that's how you do these types of problems. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. We're going to be doing more topics in this unit and other physics units, and I hope you have a great day. Take care.